Hi guys, it is still September 17, 2018. I want to go through some information regarding South Carolina, North Carolina. I don't want to leave out Virginia, but I'm focused right now on what is taking place in North Carolina, South Carolina, but Virginia has been having an awful lot of tornadoes and it's causing damage. Those tornadoes are causing damage. But what is happening here in North Carolina, South Carolina is really very concerning. Now, I posted the video earlier showing uh, someone taking a video and posting it on Facebook. It was a video last night of all of these emergency vehicles driving down a freeway uh, on their way, uh, I guess, to North Carolina the video was taken in Myrtle Beach. It was posted on Logic Before Authorities channel, and he lives, you know, somewhere in that area. He's also very concerned about what is taking place. The military response to this has been huge. When I hear the Army Corps of Engineers is in North Carolina, South Carolina, they concerned about dams and levees. Well, that really concerns me because the Army Corps of Engineers is known to blow up levees to create massive flooding, to release waters from reservoirs that created massive flooding in Houston, and the dams. So let me just get into this information, but listen to this uh, I, he's a guy from the Army Corps of Engineers, the Chief of Engineers. Todd Seminite, he's U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, Chief of Engineers and Commanding General. General, thanks so much. Sorry we had to go for the Susan Collins breaking news, but we appreciate you coming back. We talked about dams. I want to talk about uh, power plants, in particular the nuclear power plants, which were of concern as the storm was approaching. Did they fare okay through the storm? <clears throat> David, they do, and of course, those are really uh, uh, one run by uh, private companies and watched very closely by the state. The federal government is always able to assist and to be able to, you know, help do some assessments there. But uh, we don't see any threat with those power plants, and I think no threat with those power plants. They fared fine through the hurricane. This was posted today, and Duke Energy has declared the uh, Brunswick nuclear power plant in North Carolina. An emergency? Okay, something is very wrong here. The Army Corps of Engineers is saying that the nuclear power plants fared well. Uh, and he goes on even in a little bit of detail. I think the other thing is most of the infrastructure uh, is holding up pretty well. So our focus, as you said in the beginning, is really on dams and levees. What, one of the great things... Okay, so what's happening with that nuclear power plant? This guy is saying that the infrastructure held up well. Was it flooded? What happened? You know, somebody left a comment underneath one of my videos, and they said that... This was a military exercise. And you know what? That, <laughs> they could be right. It's about the Carolinas, there, there are so many military bases there. Uh, I got a son who's at one of them, by the way, but, but you, got, you got a lot of, of help there from people who know how to pitch in in a crisis, right? Well, you do, and of course, we've got the, all the services are right in that area. Uh, the FEMA IS, the uh, staging base, we actually put right at Fort Bragg. So you've got all of these service members that are there at Bragg, FEMA side by side, and of course, DOD is in support of FEMA. So if a state or a local government needs help, we got over 100 helicopters ready to go in, uh, 13,000 soldiers, sailors, airmen, and Marines. So it really is uh, uh, very, very convenient that all those people are right there. Talk about rebuilding, and let's start with where we, we began with, which is, which is the dams bursting. That's, that's your specialty, right? It is, and uh, we have about 10 core... And it's their specialty to create an awful lot of flooding by blowing up levees and releasing reservoirs. 
And what are they going to be doing with these dams? Uh, you know, if you don't know what the Army Corps of Engineers has been doing to an awful lot of states creating massive, massive flooding, then you need to do some research. But they have, and the Army Corps of Engineers is, you know, it's just implementing the United Nations Agenda 2030 plan. So, you know, a lot of the flooding in the mega regions, you know, suddenly people are facing new regulations and their cities being reshaped in accordance with Agenda 2030. Um, I absolutely do believe that this is going to be taking place in South Carolina and North Carolina. Corps of Engineer dams, federal dams, there's about 25 different Army dams, but there's on the order of uh, five or 6,000 state and local dams. And the challenge you have here is along a river, you might have um, you know, a federal dam, then a state dam, then a local dam. And what's important to know is that those are all working in concert with each other. So if one dam were to have a challenge, that's going to have ramifications down the river. So that's what the Corps does, I think, is be able to help not only a state understand what could be the impact. Impact, but how does that whole region, again, where water two or three states away might come down and have impact? So the, the thing that uh, we're watching out is all the way up until this next Saturday, we could see some of these rivers. Cape Fear is a good example where it started out at 16 feet last Friday. It's going to go to 30 feet by this Saturday. So while people are walking around Wilmington thinking it's not raining and it's sunny, we still have a lot more water to come down the river. Wow, wow. And you have the runoff, too, uh, coming down from the mountains. So that's, that's a problem. General, uh, we wish you the very best. Okay. You're doing a heroic job. We All really right, appreciate it. So they're already setting up more flooding to come. <laughs> this, you want to talk wag the dog or or something 1984-ish, the national security correspondent, Eric Rosales, uh, U.S. military gearing up for Hurricane Florence. And that's the message from emergency management officials. Hurricane Florence can bring big impacts to our area, from strong storm surges along the eastern coastline to major flooding inland. Over at the Pentagon, top military brass are already mobilizing our troops to be ahead of the storm. Northern Command is sending an advanced team to the Emergency Operations Center in Riley, North Carolina today to conduct an assessment and coordinate with federal and state partners. Pentagon leaders say hundreds of troops are ready to be deployed at a moment's notice while FEMA is setting up operations at Fort A.P. Hill, Virginia. Joe Bastardi, chief forecaster for Weatherbell Analytics, tells CBN News the worst could come days after the storm hits. They already set all of this up, the worst to come after the storm hits. Interesting, isn't it? And by the way, the Pentagon? Oh, uh... They may have sent hundreds of troops, but they have, oh God, I can't remember the exact figure, but thousands of troops on standby. The Pentagon. And we seem to have these videos. Now, I can't verify uh, the videos. They seem to be on channels that are not like military channels, but our military certainly um, well, they post their YouTube videos promoting how magnificent is our military. But this apparently is unprecedented military forces deployed to Florence relief effort. Well, I can tell you that National Guards, as far as the National Guard in California, and Pennsylvania, this is Pennsylvania, um, they're ready to do, or they were ready already, to do search and rescue missions after Hurricane Florence. This is the Pennsylvania Guard video as they're preparing, and there you do the search in the YouTube, just do a military response to Hurricane Florence. And you will see an awful lot of videos. Now, 
you know, it, it's it's really kind of hard to fathom when when we know the buoys in truth by grace tracked the winds the data from Noah the buoys there were not hurricane winds so many including myself were posting videos showing this was a manufactured storm and whether they wanted it to be a category four or five hitting the two coasts South Carolina and North Carolina well they obviously failed now can they create flash flooding in areas absolutely um, can they get these storms to just sit over areas like it sat over Wilmington for quite a while um, and then it seemed to be well now we're just going to release it and it, and it's moved up north quite quickly but this is the military forces deployed to Florence relief effort. Okay. Um, well, when I read articles like this, it kind of verifies the videos that I've looked at. Generals, generals anticipate peak flooding from Florence late this week. This was posted today at 6 p.m. It's a worry for Wilmington. The top generals in charge of the military response to Hurricane Florence and its aftermath anticipate the worst flooding late this week with the hard hit Wilmington area still in the crosshairs. What are they doing to Wilmington? Record rainfall and flooding has already isolated Wilmington and where you see Wilmington, and what, what do they mean by isolated? You know, mainstream media, it's cut off from the rest of the world. Now, there are roads, you've got access into Wilmington. Does that mean that this whole border, you know, people are being denied access into Wilmington? And then, does it also mean that those in Wilmington can't get out? Has the entire Wilmington really been cut off from the world? Well, love to hear from people who are around this area who actually know what is taking place. But this this news is very, very concerning. Um, so record rainfall flooding has already isolated Wilmington, the coastal North Carolina city of 120,000 people um, and deluges upstream will add to Wilmington's woes. It looks like the peak of flooding won't actually be over until at least Saturday and potentially beyond that. That's an Air Force General, Terrence O'Shaughnessy, um, the commander of U.S. Northern Command, will be out in force until at least the weekend. 5,600 active duty troops, 6,700 National Guardmen backing local emergency workers responding to the disaster in North and South Carolina. Military trucks that can ford water on washed out roads have been in high demand for rescues and delivery aid in Wilmington or all over because the flooding again that I have seen well new videos are popping up on mainstream media and the flooding seems to be an awful lot worse than what we have seen previously but We need the military to drop off water. Coastal cities and towns from Wilmington south to Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, are at the highest risk of being cut off. This was posted today at 6 p.m. And I'll get to another article that actually 
actually states that coastal towns are at big risk for flooding. Myrtle Beach that was spared great damage from that hurricane. Well, now you're looking at massive flooding. Huh. So, um, they're at the highest risk of being cut off as flood water washes out roads. And that from Army Lieutenant General Jeffrey Buchanan, the senior officer on the ground overseeing relief operations. To the west, landslides are possible. The worst is yet to come. The worst is yet to come. This is not just one military um, commander saying this. Well, we've heard it from the Army Corps of Engineers. We've heard it from the uh, commander of Northern Command. We're hearing it from the Army, Buchanan, uh, Air Force, taking cues from flood predictions by the Army Corps of Engineers. The military has sent about 240 trucks capable of operating in high water to the region. Offshore, offshore, they have begun flying Osprey aircraft. And isn't that the, isn't this the, um, where was it? Oh, sorry. Isn't that an Osprey? Osprey? Okay, I think it is, but I could be wrong. Um, well, they've begun flying those aircraft to survey storm damage. Ships may be needed to ferry aid to communities cut off by rising floodwaters. This was posted today. They are loaded with boats, with landing craft, that can be used to bring in additional capability if this flooding ends up being as bad as it's seemingly projected to be. Okay, well one of the reasons why I'm posting this video is because get this information out. People need to be informed that massive flooding may be coming to areas that were not flooded at all by the hurricane. I don't foresee this happening, but where do I get that from? Just a sense, a feeling? I don't want to be freaking anybody out, but it is alarming and people need to be informed. And if they think that this massive flooding is coming, are they calling for evacuations in all of the areas that they claim will need, uh, you know, these boats to bring them food and water because they're going to be cut off. Like Wilmington? Well, I would think that they would be calling for evacuations. Well, they are calling for some evacuations, but that's due to dam failure in South Carolina and North Carolina. But the watches and the warnings, okay, this was, let me just refresh it just to see if they have another update. No. All right, so at 10.10 10 p.m. tonight, watches and warnings, flood warnings for all of these counties in North and South Carolina. New Hanover, Pender, Columbus, Robeson, Bladen, Brunswick, Brunswick, Darlington, Horry, Florence, Northern Georgetown, and in Northeastern, well, did you get that some of them were South Carolina? Okay, but Dillon, Marion, Marlboro in South Car uh, Carolina. Okay, flooding across the warned area. 
although rainfall from Florence has ended, accumulations of 10 to 25 inches of rain has caused excessive runoff and many towns and communities are flooded. Many roads are impassable, barricaded, washed away. Flowing water covers interstates. Some neighborhoods are cut off. Rivers, creeks, tributaries are rising, flooding even more areas and slowing the recession of high water. People in the warned area should not travel and be prepared for widespread flooding. Okay, widespread flooding, your areas cut off, so you shouldn't travel. Okay, then just sit in your homes and be flooded out. This doesn't seem to be making much sense to me, but the widespread flooding, you can expect to be on a magnitude greater than Floyd and Matthew. Some locations that will experience flooding include Wilmington, Florence, Myrtle Beach, Lumberton, Conway, North Myrtle Beach, Leland, Bennettsville, Hartsville, Marion, Dillon, Oak Island, uh, Lake City, Darlington, Chirau, I don't know, um, Chirau, it's in South Carolina, uh, Carolina Beach, Whiteville, Mullins, Burgaw, Surfside Beach. You can expect excessive runoff from heavy rainfall. It'll cause flooding of small creeks and streams, highways, underpasses, in urban areas, country roads. I mean, this, this looks like, all right, most of North Carolina, South Carolina, um, fared pretty well for the supposed hurricane, but hell, now you're looking at, it's only Monday, right? It is Monday. Well, <laughs> now you can feel a little bit stressed until Saturday that the areas that you live in and you didn't get flooded out, it may very well occur. Unbelievable. But I find it interesting. Here, there's a, a drone um, and it is of, are you still watching? Yes, I just clicked it on. All right. Uh, I-95 is closed where it intersects with I-40. They claim that a lot of 95 has been flooded, but they don't show you the flooded area. They, they have this drone or helicopter, whatever. Go to the flooded area. Let us see the floods on the interstate, but we don't get to. All right. Um, no flood insurance. You can still get help. I'll get back to that. Uh, a lot of people do not have flood insurance in these areas. In fact, a very small percentage of North Carolinians and South Carolinians actually have flood insurance. But um, Florence's devastation, more evacuations as rivers reach major flood stages, death toll rises. This was posted two hours ago. Yeah, it's weather.com, which is weather channel, I believe. But um, the death, 25 in North Carolina, 6 in South Carolina, 1 in Virginia, when a building collapsed during a tornado near Richmond on Monday. Dams and levees are threatened. Uh, I'm not going to, any of you who live in North and, and particularly eastern South Carolina, where the dams are, and you guys on the coast of South Carolina, like Myrtle Beach and North Myrtle and Little River, um, take a look at this information. Now, a dozen homes in Anson County were evacuated because a small dam at a sand and gravel company burst. 
but it was just a precaution. But listen to this. You know, Ash County emergency management officials posted on Facebook that the Headwaters Dam is fine today, but shortly before 8 p.m. Sunday, the emergency manager had reported the imminent failure of the Headwaters Dam in the Headwaters subdivision of Preston. The alert said the dam was in danger of being breached, and it said people downstream of uh, Three Top Road, 5010 Three Top Road, were being asked to evacuate. Less than an hour later, another emergency was reported at a levee in Landsden, Land, Landis, that, well, that situation is under control. Now the headwaters dam is fine. It's like, and yet the Army Corps of Engineers is still saying that the dams are a threat or at risk. Wilmington cut off. Charlotte flooding. The happy news, a hundred dogs and cats were saved. Um, I-95 closed. The rainfall records have been pretty, you know, intense according to what they're saying. This is the flooding that I was talking about earlier. You know, this is, we're seeing areas in North Carolina, Leland, North Carolina, with some massive flooding. But it's so, these areas, if you look at the drone footage, it's like just that little area right there. And then when they span out, you see that the area beyond it is okay. Um, record river, river flooding. Cape Fear is a big concern. Little River is a big concern. Trent River Power outages, about 350,000 are still without power. Rescues, more than 2,600 people and 300 animals have been rescued. Um, toxic threat, the officials are on it and they're assessing the gigantic hog and poultry farms that are located in low-lying flood-prone areas and other evacuations. Authorities ordered the immediate evacuation of up to 7,500 people living within a mile of a stretch of the Cape Fear River and the Little River about a hundred miles from the North Carolina coast. The evacuation zone included part of the city of Fayetteville, population 200,000. Um, and South Carolina waiting on the rivers. All along rivers and tributaries in Horry County, um, families waited and watched for the flood. They're pretty sure is coming. The Waccamaw River was at 15.1 feet. By late Monday, which is today, four feet above flood stage, it's expected to pass 17.9 feet by Friday. There's alligators and everything in that water. Okay, there's no more time. Emergency crews rescued dozens of families in Conway on Monday. A uh, city official said they made 12 water rescues and in Horry County saved about 25 people before 8 a.m. The roads closed. The, this is South Carolina. They say several roads across the state, including along Interstate 95, were a nine-mile stretch of the freeway in Dillon County 
was closed because of flooding. Well, there were something like 700 roads closed due to flooding in North Carolina. Here in South Carolina, several roads across the state were closed. So it doesn't sound like the flooding was all that terrific, right? But now the worst may still be coming. Rivers including the Little PD, the Waccamaw, the Great PD, the Lumber, and the Black River are expected to reach or exceed flood levels this week. And uh, bridges threatened, well, several, uh, the flood waters could wash over several bridges in the state. You can call your Department of Transportation to find out. But this is Virginia. Tornadoes. Tornadoes. The damage we are seeing. Well, 670 pages. So, yeah, they're not, this is not just uh, Virginia. I think in areas that we just don't know about, because mainstream media really does focus on, you know, the I guess the biggest cities, you know, they did that with the Harvey, Houston. They did it with the Baton Rouge flood, hardly ever mentioning the surrounding towns. And they're doing it in North Carolina. New Bern and Wilmington get the most attention, but there are other areas. So, uh, yeah. You guys, please stay um, safe. Here is an article on the South Carolina dams. Dams in danger of failing, sheriff says, as aftermath of Hurricane Florence wrecks rural South Carolina. Shira, I don't know how to pronounce that. Um, Shira. State Park Dam stood intact Monday after surviving Sunday's torrential rains and floodwaters. The sh sheriff had gone door to door to tell people living below the dam that it was in potential danger of failure Sunday night. Okay, so it looks like the waters had receded and uh, things were okay, but that is not what we're getting from our fabulous generals and those who are um, in command of this Hurricane Florence. So, uh, dams in danger of breaching due to Florence you can click on the link below and check it out. Here, uh, multiple dams in grave danger in Carolinas. And this is only 1 minute and 19 seconds. But I do want to just, before I, I play that video, all of this is today. All of this information is today. But when you think about all of the people who are now facing damage to their homes and because they're not in these flood plains they don't have insurance and here more than a million people in North and South Carolina have suffered from the floodwaters driven ashore by Hurricane Florence 
uh, nearly 750,000 of them were forced to evacuate. Um, but most don't have flood insurance. So this article here, um, really do pay attention to this. In some instances, home insurance policies come with a hurricane deductible. If the wind speeds reach hurricane level 74 miles per hour, some insurers won't pay. But Florence's winds dropped rapidly when it made landfall, down to only 35 miles per hour by Sunday, though still laden with rain. After Superstorm Sandy in 2012, many New Yorkers were able to collect because Governor Andrew Cuomo mandated that it wasn't a hurricane event because its wind speeds had dropped below that threshold. So, in truth by grace, many channels have pointed out it was not a hurricane. So keep that in mind. And the article also goes into how Californians, they banded together and work together in fighting insurance companies because that's what you have to do. So read the article and learn from you know others who have had to fight these insurance companies that want to so deny people uh, any monies. Any monies. I'll end with this. Please get this information out to those who live in these areas in South Carolina, North Carolina. This catastrophic storm, well, one would think, okay, it's passed and now recovery begins. Well, that may very well not be the at case. least 18 people have died in the Carolinas from at Florence. Sunday night, rescuers were searching for a one-year-old child that had been swept away when the car she was in got trapped by floodwaters in Union County, North Carolina. Her mother was rescued and taken to the hospital. In North and South Carolina, thousands have been ordered to evacuate. Some residents of Creston, North Carolina, were forced to evacuate from their homes when a dam appeared close to failure. In Landis, North Carolina, police reported water Water four feet above an emergency spillway at Lake Coraher. The city of Wilmington was completely cut off by flood water. People there were waiting in line for supplies for hours. At one store, police had to escort people inside ten at a time. The governor reported at least 900 people rescued in North Carolina alone. And to make matters worse, a tornado was reported in Roseboro, causing damage to a structure there. In the town of of Chira, South Carolina, at least two dozen people in an evacuation center were forced to relocate when more than two feet of water flooded their building. Travel was also seriously impacted in South Carolina. A nine-mile stretch of I-95 in Dillon County was closed due to flooding. Dillon County was closed due to flooding. All right. Okay, guys. Um, Perhaps I shouldn't end it there because the Landis, the Landis situation is under control. Um, floodwaters have begun to recede. And if you have a memory, then you'll remember where I said it began to recede. Yeah. This ain't over. It ain't over until the fat lady sings and the military goes.